Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, big interview, man. We got Glasses Malone in the neighborhood, man. West Coast very own. And Glasses, first off, I got to say welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, man, as long as I've known Glasses, mm. and Glasses is about one of the most nicest mother effers that you can meet. This is our first time really? sitting down in the neighborhood. <laughs> and, and it's cra- and, and we sitting down because of this so-called yes. Tupac, Tupac must, die. must die controversy. <laughs> mm-hmm. All righty. Now, we just kind of um, brought it up. <laughs> and I, they, she is yeah, a yeah. She Tupac is. diehard. Yeah, Debbie Dev. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I haven't even had the conversation with Debbie. I yeah. need to have but, it with her. But also, though, though Glasses, man, you've always been a, a writer, always been good with the West Coast. Mm-hmm. I've never looked at at glasses like yeah a staple yeah and i've never looked at glasses like oh man glasses is a hater that's why when i saw this i took it as artistic i took it as written you know what i'm saying and i think some people kind of looked at it a different way quickly now yeah very quickly Mm -hmm. now with tupac must die and then when we saw the tweet and the tweet was tupac deserved to die and that's what got my attention so what what's behind the actual recording of the song and and the tweet. Where were you at going into Tupac Must Die? Um, it really was a simple story. Mm-hmm. I've been telling the same story probably for like ten years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Twelve years um, since I've been a professional, like in the business. I think people just care about it now, like right. because somebody they love is involved. Um, I even killed myself in the same, like, I have a video with me and J-Rock called No Sympathy mm-hmm. where I killed myself based around gangbanging. So that's how much people don't love me that they love Tupac enough to right, right, like, wait. Right. Tupac yeah. got killed because of gangbanging? Like, we didn't call you in like, yeah, hey, glasses, like, what you doing I mean, to yourself? How you kill yourself? But it was like, Tupac died, and I'm like, well, it's just a simple story. Like, it ain't really a bunch of people, like, it ain't no disrespect. and Like, not out of his name, it's just if... Somebody jumped me if the Pope and seven priests jumped me like the Catholic Church going to bury somebody. Mm-hmm. It's like, just how it go. Like like Big said, because I know you for me, you're you're a sure. West Coast staple. Sure. I like I saw it. And to be honest, yes, I was extremely bothered by the tweet, <laughs> by your words of saying Tupac deserved to die. Because, first of all, I don't believe that anybody deserves to die. So then I was like, let me see what he's talking about. Let me not jump what on it and just mean? go look. Um, it means that in the culture that we come up with from the streets, street life, you know, when somebody gets jumped, no matter who you are, like we all equal, like it's, um, it's fair play for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even the greatest rapper of Mm -hmm. all time could become a subject to like gangbang violence. The demise, the ultimate demise that I, at least from what I understood of the song, I, I agree with the message that I took that gang life, street life is no joke. And ultimately if you play by it you might fall under it and Mm -hmm. at the end i feel like everybody loses but again to me it was just like you didn't want it to be tupac you know what it's like but i've been knowing i've been knowing about the story and i'm from la i'm from long beach so i've heard of the story that possibly it was baby lane um but still it, it was more of the titling the titling and to me overall the tweet it was the passion. Yeah. It was like passion behind it. Mm-hmm. Did you know what? that when you were going to title that, it was going to get the attention and reaction? And Even just gone? writing it, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, I just wanted to keep it a passion. Mm-hmm. Like the passion that we feel in the streets. Like you feel from when your friend gets violated, when your homie gets jumped, when your friend gets shot. Like the same story. So like I just wanted to keep it passionate. If I titled it... Um, Baby Lane's side Baby's of the story. Baby Lane's Revenge or something. Right. It's mm-hmm. lame. That's lame. Mm-hmm. It has no passion. It becomes a song. What you felt is what I felt when Moto got killed. What mm-hmm. you right. felt is what I felt when my friends got killed. That's what you felt. Mm-hmm. That's the point. I wanted you to feel like Those a, emotions. a gang member. I wanted you to feel what like makes people want to go out and, and, and retaliate and get revenge. That's been my whole message this whole time. And, and Glasses, you've never been, like with social media and everything, man, I don't want people to like, oh, clout chasing. Like, you have never yeah. been a clout chaser. You've never been a, uh, I need to get a song on big. How do I get it? Like, no. like you've been one of the most humble, sure. quietest artists <laughs> that I know. For <laughs> real, for real. I don't know so, if I would get credit for being quiet. But but I, <laughs> I, I, don't, but I mean, like. I like, get what you're saying. Like, yeah, no, because, you, yeah, like, since I know you, I never was like, big, I need to get on your show. It's yeah, like, I need to get in there. Nah, it's like, um. 
clout chasing. Like, right. I've always had entirely too much clout. Mm-hmm. That's the problem Did now. Like, you have too much respect. Like, enough people don't, like, that means I'm not telling the truth enough. Mm. Something is wrong. Like, if she's not mad at me enough and I'm a, you know, I'm a, a rapper that's a crip and a gang member mm-hmm. and I've sold drugs and she likes me, something is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe I haven't been honest enough. You know, it's like your parents, like your dad. Like, if you like him too much all the time, you haven't been honest enough. Right. Like, somebody needs to be honest enough. Like, we're in a, we in a really weird industry right now where, you're competing with a lot of falsehood and everybody's promoting fake stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're looking at this person. This person is selling this lifestyle, but we all know it's not true. Right. And then now you're stuck in it. You can't really call them out on it. Everybody's worried about being everybody's friends. Yeah, I'm just man. not worried about being uh, anybody's All the correct friends. that we got to be, yeah, all cool. the enoughs that we got to be. Let, let me yeah. ask you this. When, when you went into writing Tupac Must Die, did you know that it was going to be a flare that was going to be shot in the air? And it wasn't about clout. You knew that it was going to be like, okay, this this is going to be a, a lot of conversation. Real fast, right? Mm, 2014, me and Nipsey was having this conversation. And we have a lot of conversations. But we was having this specific conversation about authenticity and what do I sell, what does he sell, what do people buy from us? Mm-hmm. Authenticity. Mm-hmm. And he was starting to really... He was trying to get me to engage in marketing. Like he wanted me to engage in marketing, the concept of it, what it represented, what it meant. And it actually fit me because what I came to realize was marketing was about stories. I'm a really good storyteller. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I'm really good at. I've been telling stories this whole time. Um, So walking into it, I definitely knew that you all would care that Tupac Shakur you know, was a part of the story. But if you listen to the actual story itself, I never say his name. Like, Mm -hmm. I never say his name. I never identify anybody else. Mm -hmm. This whole story is about Baby Lane, but Mm -hmm. the title is the passion of the song, the passion of the revenge, the retaliation that you feel as a gang member. So when I wrote the story, I knew everybody was going to be involved. You know what I'm saying? I knew they were going to feel the pain. Like, Debbie Dev cussed me out. Like, she was so mad. And I'm like... Oh, I can only imagine. And when I explained to her, she was like, oh, you know, I get it. It makes perfect sense. And I'm like, yeah, that's now you got the Do message. Do you think I've been some people to, are uh, just afraid to say some of the things is. that you say? She's a fish. It's scared. It's fear. It's fear. Gangster rap should be scary at times. But but at the same time, though, it's Tupac rapped about his own death his entire life. So it's not it wasn't even about that. It, because if had I like not like sat back and actually took time to listen to what sure. you had to say like because i know a lot of people that haven't even heard the song yeah, yeah. and have an opinion about the yeah, song sure. yeah. you know what and i mean that's the way people yeah. are. and and i didn't want to be that person yeah, yeah, yeah. because i was like let me really hear out what he has to say i still feel like i don't give a shit sorry about baby lane's side of the story like i don't yeah, like but what if that was you yeah like you're not tupac what if like what if Cardi B walks in he with seven He snatched somebody's in chain, though. Like you, he Again, like but it's like if, you, you, if Pac deserved to die, then I it's fair to say that he deserved to get jumped for snatching chains. But that's more to the story, like right. If you're in a gang, right, people fight and they clash. It's right. the clash of the titans. It's a competition of who's the strongest, the best who's or... the who's the who's the bravest, who's willing to fight. Mm-hmm. So if you lose in a fight and somebody snatches your chain, shout out to Trey because his chain actually didn't get snatched. Like, it's always been the, the debate about that. But Whether it did or it he didn't. He complained. But, you know, regardless, that's a gang fight. Mm-hmm. This is all gang banging business. The question becomes, how does Tupac play into it? Then at that point, as a Tupac MLB. fan, you got to say, all right, was he representing the mob pie rule? Like, right. Is him and Lil Wayne from the same hood as Suge Knight? You know, or did he just become a victim of something that he didn't have anything to do with it? And, to me, honestly, all I did in my mind was show you that, you know, maybe you might now believe Jesus had a wife and kid. Mm. You know, most people pray to Tupac and you need him to be without flaws. You need him to be with only flaws you accept. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be like, imagine if you had to convince yourself that this grown man became a Ma Pyro member. So he got influenced. The most influential artist of possibly hip hop of all time became influenced by the Los Angeles culture. And you don't want to. He- you he don't did. want to face that, right? So yeah. then at that point, if you face it, then you have to. How don't you care about Baby mm-hmm. Lane's side of the story? What if it was you? What if Cardi B walked in here with her homegirls and just mopped you up? Like, what would you just say? You'd be like, oh, I like her raps. It's cool. No, definitely not. Mm. I feel like anybody's going to react and have a reaction to being jumped, period. And what if somebody Still said, nobody deserves to die. Well, that's my point. What if it, the culture of it, 
Right. Like that's the point of it is when you don't have anything else, when you based around poverty and you don't have anything. Are but you your glasses? Reputation. Are you saying Tupac must die or is Baby, Baby Lane, Lane saying that? Is saying it's Tupac from his must perspective, die. Yeah. right? It's not nothing to do with me. Tupac right. didn't jump me. He right. made all my jams. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's to, to anybody that's listening, is Glasses Malone a Tupac hater? No. I gotta ask. That's impossible. How could anybody hate Tupac Shakur? It's like crazy. That doesn't even make sense. But like she just said, I actually like Baby Lane. I know what that is like. What I was, care. What was your connection to Baby Lane? Zero. Did you know him? My boy Dre was his best friend. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And Dre was my my boy. He was a little older than me, but he was my guy. You feel me? That was my guy. That's how I know the story. But the thing that just really rang a uh, bell for me is when you say you don't care about baby lane why do you care about the celebrity like why do you care about who's celebrated what makes him any better than every man walking this earth i just feel like at this point with so many years going by like i don't care to hear that side of the story just like i wouldn't care to hear eric Holder's side of the story of why he decided to kill nipsey yeah but i don't understand what those two even have to do just because they rap like, i'm just i'm just saying like is as far as hearing why he did it or his motives or him being jumped or how he decided to move I, about I, I that think, day and mob that day. I think artistically, I think it was, I think it was written well. Yeah, it was. I get the side of it. Sure. I, I, I'm probably, I don't know if you knew Pac, but I'm probably the only person in this room that mm -hmm. knew Pac. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I I looked at that and I wasn't offended no, and, by and, it. And this is really his energy. Like, that's the thing people don't get. This is, the energy that I'm under right now is very Tupac-like. It's very mm -hmm. honest. It's very pure. It's no. It's with no regards for how everybody Why else feels. Why do something that you knew was going to be unpopular when we're so afraid of I don't care being if, popular? I don't care if people like me. Mm -hmm. I've never cared if people like me. I've always been just genuine. And being yourself. Yeah, it's like I've, I've found comfort in knowing that people probably are not going to like if I tell the truth. So I got to make a difference. Am I going to... Be an artist that's going to come out and wear $20 million worth of fake jewelry mm -hmm. and, <laughs> you know, borrow people's cars, not dogging nobody. Or am I going to make a song that's honest and sincere without any disrespect, yet people still be offended by it? Am I mm -hmm. going to call out the the uh, the the flaws and the, and the bull, the BS and all of the game? Do, am I going to do that or what am I going to do? And I made Do you my feel, choice. Glasses, that people have an opinion that didn't even listen to the record, mm -hmm. that just looked at the title <laughs> of it? I mean, I could imagine. I mm -hmm. just, I honestly, when I made it and and I, we avoided putting it out on his birthday. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's what everybody in marketing was like. Oh, he put it out on his birthday. I'm like, I don't want people to think I hate. This. Right. I play too many of his songs. It's going to look weird if I'm jamming his songs or if you see like some of my lyrics and I'm inspired by his music and then I put it, it, it becomes too much of like you hate him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's not that. It's really just. I care about Baby Lane. Like she just said, like she doesn't. I care about Baby mm -hmm. Lane. Like it matters to me about the everyday person. Every regular person matters to me. I'm an everyday person. I'm not a celebrity. Mm -hmm. as, as much as Los Angeles could celebrate me, as much as Watts could celebrate me, as much as Crips could celebrate me, I'm not a celebrity. Like that's cool if you celebrate. I'm for the everyday person. Now, when we say Baby Lane, are we saying Baby Lane the person or Baby Lane also as a representative of all the... So all baby lanes out there. Orlando as a human being, Orlando as a person from my environment. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That the streets raise Orlando as who he is, every person that's him, the regular mm -hmm. guy. Not the guy that's being celebrated and praised. Did, I respect both of them. Did Orlando ever confess or no. admit that it was him? No. Never, ever, ever. Because yeah. he has an uncle, right, that's saying that he was in the car and he was the yeah. one that told him to. He has some, like, super-duper dope Vlad interviews. Um, Really, Mob James has, like, this amazing interview and he talks about it. Um, His uncle, Keefe D, I, mm -hmm. I, I know him. him. Yeah. I met him a lot of times. He's a really all right dude. Um, Yeah, it's like I just care about the regular. I make rap for regular people. Mm -hmm. I don't make rap for, like, I don't rap about millions of dollars. I don't mm -hmm. rap about, you know, I try not to rap about mansions. I try not to rap about lifestyles that regular people don't have. I mm -hmm. get it. We're in the game and you're listening to a thousand rappers. I'm listening to a J. Cole song on the way here. And it's like he's rapping about Drake giving him a Rolex. Mm -hmm. That's his life. I don't rap about what I do with my celebrity friends. Mm -hmm. I rap about what's really going down. That's just streets. what I represent. And not just the streets, like regular stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff that really 
she can go through or yeah. he could go Gas through. Gas is too damn high. Rap, that's a rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I me? Mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's what I rap about. And this story just becomes relevant because it brings in a celebrity. Like she said. Because it that, has Tupac's that, name on it. Yeah, that really hurt my feelings when she said, well, I don't care about Baby Lion's side of this. I'm like, why would you not care about another person but you could just, oh, I care about Tupac. I love Tupac's music, but I care about who Baby yeah. Lane is, and because I'm Baby Lane as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was I'm saying. It's more of a symbol. Yeah, like I'm Tupac and Baby Lane in most situations. I'm somebody who I could be in the hood. I could be Nipsey Hussle, and I could end up being mm-hmm. uh, uh, Eric Holder. I'm in both situations right. to where I don't know what's going on. So the light, you know, I, I, ca- I care. Like, hey, I glasses. Just care. What was your relationship and is your relationship with Nipsey Hussle? That's my boy to yeah. the through and through, like. First day, you know what I'm saying? Like when he first started rhyming, first everything, second project, third project, you know what I'm saying? Like that's my guy. And this is something that we talked about a thousand times. Just, you know, some people feel like you need to dumb down. I just had to get smarter. Mm-hmm. I don't have a choice. I can't dumb down. It's impossible for me. Could you see the artistic value in if somebody wrote uh Nipsey Hussle mm-hmm. must die. Is it good? Did Nipsey des- deserve is it? Good? It? Is it good? Is it? If it's good, I can listen right, to it. You right. know what I'm saying? If it's good, like I need to hear it because it may be some stuff I didn't know. But again, like, do I think any human being deserves to die? She doesn't feel like that. I think it's a thousand reasons for people to get killed. It's a ton mm-hmm. of reasons for people to, to for me, I, it's I know at least I got a, a good few. list of mm-hmm. 20, 30 reasons. But you, you put those things behind you when you have something to live for. Yeah. Like when you walk outside and you come to your radio station job and you get this check or if somebody steal your car, you got insurance, you can get yeah. another one. But when you don't have any of that, that's what really lowers the value of life because your, your life ain't worth nothing. Mm-hmm. So I'm very focused on what's happening every day. Like when I live downtown, you feel me? Like I live where I don't live in a high rise. I live right where it's a nice building at the top floor and right across the street is poor people, yeah. mm-hmm. people living on the streets. So I never forget. I never want to feel like I don't care about Baby Lane's side of the story. I never want to feel that. I this, never want to not care about Baby Lane because I like somebody else's rap music so much mm-hmm. or I idolize another human being so much. I never want that feeling. Mm-hmm. I always want to care about all people. It's just who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. I can't you help it. You said that um, the the marketing people wanted you to put it out on Tupac's birthday, but was mm-hmm. there anyone in your own circle that tried to get you to not put it out whatsoever? Period. Yeah, everybody. Uh, still, you know, Big Steel. Mm-hmm. Big Steel, my manager, he, I, I thought he was going to quit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm People out. like really? me. It's like other gang members calling him. He had to talk to gang members. You know what I'm saying? And they like, man, glasses is this, that, and the third. And I told him like, check this out, man. I've been a crip for over 20 years. I've done the Denver Lane Hood Day, performed there, the Westside Paru Hood mm-hmm. Day. Athens Park family room when they was making money for their homeboys books. Mm-hmm. I have done things that really threatened my life. If some idiot that's a rap fan of Tupac Shakur want right. to go really meet him, they come play. Yeah. Feel me? That's, I'm for that. If you a gang member and you offended and you really want to get cracking on me over life. this, you going to meet Tupac too. Like I have no problem. I haven't even thought twice like about this ain't even something that I would even feel bad about because you an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I just focus on what's real. Like, y'all got enough rappers that come through this station that focus on the highlights, that focus mm-hmm. on the highlights of life. You know, the slam dunk in the basketball game, the, the big block shots. Glasses is about defense. Mm-hmm. Glasses is about rebounding. Glasses is about the whole fundamentals of the game. Dennis Rodman is a top 10 player to me. You know, defense. that's that's mm-hmm. a big thing because I focus on what really makes life work. I focus on, you know, I, I, all my friends is Tupac, right? But... I still got friends and I am, you know what I mean? Baby Lane, Orlando Anderson. I know what that feels like. I've been jumped before. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to not have a future to look forward to tomorrow if my reputation today ain't stamped. Mm -hmm. If how can I go collect on a debt somebody owe me for something if people know that this this nigga beat me up? Mm -hmm. I can't let that ride. That's what the deserve stands for. Mm -hmm. Does Glasses Malone think Tupac deserve to die? I don't even know him. Mm-hmm. Like and plus no, because I wouldn't have all my jams. Mm-hmm. But I could respect the mentality that Orlando Anderson went in with the situation because I know what his life is like. I've lived that life before I started rhyming every day. I lived that life, a different lifestyle. So I we, 
you know, it's really important that we care about all the sides of the story. We don't, you know, as a society, we love to just jump off the porch and, mm-hmm. you know, get your pitchfork. We all talk about Donald Trump. Everybody want to talk bad about Donald Trump, but you pick up your pitchfork fast as hell when you have one side of the story because we celebrate people so fast. We make them a God and then we like, oh, they couldn't do nothing wrong. Well, Tupac could have did something wrong or he could have did like something wrong. I feel like he was right. very flawed. Yeah, and, or he could have did something right and was really just getting down for his homeboys. Mm-hmm. He didn't do nothing that I wouldn't have did. Mm-hmm. But I also understand when it's all said and done, like the song I have with J-Rock called No Sympathy, don't mm-hmm. feel bad for me when it happened. Don't hate the person that did it to me if I actually put myself right. in this position put, because put in that situation. if somebody else put themselves in that situation, they got it coming. It's just mm-hmm. how it works out here. Hopefully you care about what's going on in the streets enough mm-hmm. to not constantly put people, talk to people that glorify it and fake it like it's good and everybody talking about they banging, but they not really banging. They not even nowhere where nobody could touch them. Mm -hmm. it's really important the message of this song is like really 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 important like it's there's no glory in it nobody's a winner baby lane died in 1998 in the same type of situation Mm -hmm. trying to collect on a debt Mm -hmm. in the streets like people die every day Mm -hmm. and nobody knows because we you know we get disconnected and we start acting like it's not happening you know and then now all the rappers are perpetuating it and it's like yeah they're not it's no sadness about their songs you don't hear them talking about they friends dying. You know, when do you hear a rapper talking about they friends dying over and over? It's like for the first two days and then it's over. Then now they back to in the club mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how many bottles they popping? Well, no, like my friends dying still hurt me. People dying still bothers me. And and as much as I love Tupac Shakur and everything he represented and all his music, I respect Baby Lane and I know what that is, too. So I felt like it was time for people to stop demonizing him. It was time for me to make our day care about his story. Maybe she'll go read into it and realize he wasn't that bad of a guy. He just got put in a situation where he didn't have nothing else to look forward to. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I can't I ain't going out like that. Like, I'm not going to be able to live my life accordingly if I let somebody do this to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now we can have real conversations. That's what the point of this. This is like not a joke. It's real. So, mm-hmm. yeah, when I came up with it, I I thought people would finally get the message. It took me 12 years. And, to get this and message. that's why glasses, man, I really wanted to. To bring you in to have that conversation because we had a, a round of tennis mm-hmm. when she brought it up. Oh, she was hot. Yeah, I was. you know what I'm saying. I was, you I see me on comment. IG. Yeah, I was like, "What is going?" On? I hit head. I was like, but hey, "I what love is going on? that you also." We said, "Man, can you come up?" And you were here early. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate and, and, you coming in. And yeah, face on. Yeah, and face you. on, man. Wow. And, and thank you for the intelligent dialogue and thank the conversation. Definitely. As well, I, hate, man. I hate it wasn't funny because it's not really. LA not really good for the conversation, but I hated that. Like I said, is 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 it had to be taken like this? Mm-hmm. I mean, they killed Jesus for the same message. And it had to be said. Yeah, and they, and they if they crucified Jesus for the same message, why would I think it's the difference? If if people could, you know, people hated him when he was alive. People hated Muhammad Ali. People hated Martin Luther King. People hated Malcolm X. And I'm comparing myself to him in only regards of delivering truth. Again, my truth ain't biased at all. Like I didn't, I don't dislike Tupac. Even in the song, it's not like, oh, Tupac is a, right. okay, yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. like it's this dude jumped me. Now I don't have nothing left, and my homies is putting pressure on me, and I'm really upset about it. I would fight him if I could, but if I can't, I'm gonna make sure he know I was the wrong person to do this to, and that's how we do everything we had to do. Glasses, thank you for thank your time, you. bro. Love, Glasses Malone in the neighborhood, big boy big neighborhood. Boy.